Hey, how are we? Well, been a while since I've done an update on the uh, E4900 cabinet. And um, the project has basically come to a grinding fucking halt. Why? Let's go have a look. So a couple of weeks ago, now, the 68 pin to 50 pin SCSI plug showed up, which was really good. And I thought I was on a winner. Now we all know the problem I was having with my D240 here, so I decided to get my V880's DVD drive out of it. Now this is a Toshiba SD-M1401 SCSI DVD ROM. Just a 50 pin. 50 pin SCSI. And don't tell me it looks like it's an IDE because it's not. I know it's a SCSI. I got this tower here with just a power supply in it to drive this. And the new cable on the box there for my uh, JBOD disc array. Just a bunch of discs in there. 3300 series 4 disc drive uh, sun array. I connected that up because we all know I've been having problems with this. And I managed to get Solaris 10 U5 onto the e-server. And I thought, great. Things are going to start maybe to work. And as soon as I did that, the whole fucking wheels on this project fell off. Let me explain why. I decided that if that was going to work, I would clear the decks, start again, reset the whole machine, clear it all out of all the other shit that had been going on, and we'll try and see if I can get free BSD on it. <laughs> and as soon as I did that, this started to play up. Now if we have a look, You'll see here we've got our audio, our audio, our mode select jumpers, our SCSI interface, and our Molex power. So when the power supply on this one finally died, I grabbed this ATX supply, put the jumper on green and black, which is this wire down here, I know it's a long wire, and got this to power up. All of a sudden, I was able to probe the drive target and disk but the e-server couldn't boot from it so I started changing these jumpers I could probe it wouldn't boot from it so I took it back to the way it was when I took it out of the V880 which is how it was when I installed Solaris 10U5 went to put BSD on it wouldn't do it so I thought alright let's just make sure that it's not BSD. We'll go for Solaris 10U5 again. So I tried to install Solaris 10U5 and the same fucking problem. It can't, it now can't open the boot device. So whilst I can probe it, I can't boot from it. And for those in the know, you will know that Sun Microsystems optical drives can become very flaky and very problematic at the drop of a fucking hat. Well, that's happened to this. So, now what I've got to work out is whether or not I can get this to work again, or if I've got to go and get another 50-pin DVD drive. Now, at the moment, this whole project has come to a screaming fucking halt because this, which is the only other non-IDE DVD I've got, has gone flaky. And because I don't have any other way of testing this on either this or any other server I've got, uh, I can't even test it on the V490s because the 490s don't have a 50-pin interface. And 
at the moment, my 490s are actually in production mode at the moment. They're being used off-site. So I can't even go and test this. So at the moment, until I sort this problem out, this comes to a grinding halt. So hopefully soon I'll be able to put up some um, progress videos on how this is going because at the moment it's going nowhere. Um, I, I guess my biggest problem is because I set such high standards for myself, if it's for a customer, they'll often just turn around and go, look, go and buy whatever you need to buy, we'll pay for it. Doesn't happen when you're working on your own equipment. And because I am at the stage now where I want this up and running, I'm 90% of the way there. It's the last 10% 10, 10 that has put the brakes on the whole project. So that's the update on the East server at the moment. Um, I'm glad that uh, that new VHDCI, sorry, VH, yeah, VHDCI uh, SCSI lead showed up, and that's in that's beautiful lead. I got that dirt cheap. I only paid twelve bucks you uh, twelve bucks Australian for it. So uh, it was actually on sale here in Australia, and I got it for twelve bucks. Not complaining. So that's the update on the East server. Uh, unfortunately, I've got no other news on it. Um, the cable for the D240 has also showed up from the bulkhead here. The uh, 68 pin to, uh, sorry, 50 pin to VH, no it isn't, it's 68 pin to uh, VHDCI. The new cable showed up. Here it is here. Already all installed, which is good. No busted pins in there, as you can see, look. No busted pins, 68 pin to VHDCI. So the new cable's in. And now this is shit itself. So, yeah, I'm... I'm <laughs> you can probably tell I'm frustrated, everyone. You really can. It, it, it does give me the shits. Couple of quick other updates. My ever-reliable, beloved, trustworthy, IBM e server 325 running my untangled firewall for some unknown reason went into thermal shutdown yesterday now it was only 21 degrees celsius here yesterday so it wasn't hot uh in my garage the outdoor workshop the um it's about five or six degrees cooler so that means it was only 15 16 degrees here in the garage this overheated I don't know why, um, but the thermal alarm was on, so I don't know what happened. And my DX2810 Windows server there, the small form factor that I modified, also went into thermal shutdown yesterday. So, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, that's an update on the cabinet. Apologies for the grumpiness, but you can probably understand my frustration. 90% of the way there... I still can't get the fucking thing to run. So anyway, hopefully soon, once I've sorted out the, ironed out the issues with this, we might be able to put a progress video up. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.